Thanks for that, Ellington Single. Um, anywho, Adino is an incredible mon. It's a healing wisher. Uh, it's got wish. It's pretty bulky. And if Vade wants to, he can run skill swap. Now, Adino has a sucky ability in that being... No, it has regenerator. Never mind. It has a really great ability. Um, he can run a really sucky ability and just skill swap, which means, hey, you can take this ability that is not even a thing and you can switch it around. So Adino can do a lot of things depending on how he uses Adino. I think it fills up that role as, once again, he brings in, if Aromatisse is not doing what it's supposed to, Adino can step in and do that. Uh, Dino is just a normal type, so it, it, it's pretty much, it doesn't have any super effective um, weaknesses. There we go. Sorry, I studied there for a bit. And uh, so Aromatisse, weak to steel and poison, whatever else, steel and poison while Adino is just week 2 fighting, so that being said, he can bring in any of those two and most Pokemon can't learn fighting, steel, and poison, except for Toxic Croak. That's the only thing that he really really has to worry about. So I like the Adino pick, I like where it's at, it's one of the the prime picks that I see in his draft, I'm expecting big things from Adino. And then finally we're moving into the wild card round which was a crazy round. This is this round is where lots of things happen and Lucario, there we go. For Adino and Aromatis. But uh his scrafty pick he got in the wild card round. Now this team isn't very abundant in terms of weakness in before I say it, before of of a fairy type. So that only be Noivern and Scrafting. I think Infernape is just just neutral to it so that's only two weaknesses to fairy I like the scrafty pick it does a lot of things you can run it as a dragon dance bulk up uh, you can run shed skin intimidate and moxie it really depends on what you want to bring with that scrafty and uh, this team overall it's well it's well geared it's I can see big things this season for the New York Cacleons it really just depends on how Vade plays these mods and how he preps for each team and I'm I'm expecting big things from the New York Cacleons because later on this season they were they were out beating they were beating the top teams in the B League. He, they even beat the eventual champions, the Golden State Warriors, War Turtles. There we go. Sorry, my bad on that. And uh, he was just really really getting a real good grip on how this league really works, how to perform. Uh, gonna make sure to prep well for the Mega. Yeah. Um, in terms of Mega Gardevoir, it does, it, there's, there's like, when I was preparing for, or when I was playing Pokemon Showdown, there's only certain types of mons that really wreck your team, and the good thing about the league is that there's only one of that mon, so he only has to really be careful. He only has to be really, really careful of the, um, of just that one going against that one mon once and then preparing on the next future because that's a, that's an incredible thing about this this league is that you got to keep on doing it you got to keep on going at it and uh maybe perhaps this might be the season where he has what what we would like to say is a crump bounce back season in which crump was last place in the very first season of the rbl and then he became he went all the way on to the finals for the very next season with having the best record so Perhaps this could be the team to look out for. I know it looks like he does have the personnel to really bounce back. And if he does, that's that's awesome. That's incredible. That's another really awesome story to look at. But we're going to have to really see how he go performs in his very first battle. Uh, in terms of my favorite pick in this draft, it's going to have to be hands down the Dino. I think a Dino can do so much, so much um, his lower picks are incredible. The only thing that I'm not really that fond of is the Reggie Rock. I don't, I don't know what it's gonna do. I don't know how it's gonna perform. I don't know if it makes sense on his team. I think it was one of those mods that it was like, oh hey, Reggie Rock is there, and uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I like this team. It's well adjusted too, like Rapid Spins, Defog, uh, Road and Watch. It's got some U-turning action. It's got a decent amount of U-turning action. Uh, it's got some a decent. The rest of the plan. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, that's, I, I love the first picks. But this is this is the main reason why I separated the first six picks as opposed to the last picks. It's just because you can really see how the first six really perform. Then when you go on down in the lower terms, you can see you can see how they complement the rest of his team. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can tell the Reggie Rock or Steelix. I might have gone with the Steelix. The Steelix is it's got it got so, it has Dragon Tail Thunder Wave. I I do believe it has Thunder Wave. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's um, that other mon. Anywho, I like this team. I'm, I'm expecting big things, especially from you, Vade. And, uh, and the Noivern pick, it is love. I love seeing this Noivern pick. It perfectly complements his team. He doesn't have a lot of ice weaknesses. He doesn't have a lot of... Uh, maybe he does have... De no, he doesn't have a lot of ground weaknesses. But this is a great draft. This is an awesome draft. And uh, Vade did a really good job of really getting the things that he wanted, getting the Mega Blast Waste and the Mew Infernape from Road and Wash. That's an incredible core right there. That is a frightening core. So uh, we'll just move on to the next one. Uh, we'll see how how it compares to the other teams. Anywho, we're going to move on to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers coached by Aubrey. And uh, we'll just take a moment over here to switch up. But... As we can tell, Aubrey picked up the Mega Tyranitar over here, and I like this. I, li I like the Mega Tyranitar. It does a lot of things. Tyranitar as alone is really good. If you guys did not know, in this season of the RBL, we're going to be doing, you don't have to Mega Evolve in the very first turn. You can you can wait it out and see how it goes. Uh, so, for example, if you have Moxie uh, Pinsir, and you want to take out that mon that's at 1 HP, you can uh, you can do it. You can do it, get the Moxie boost, and then Mega Evolve to Mega Pinsir, and then start to destroy lives. Anywho, Aubrey picked up the Mega Tyranitar. Tyranitar as a, just some Pokemon is really good. Mega Tyranitar is even scarier with Dragon Dance and Sandstorm. Huge access to different moves. We can even see that Ice Beam uh, Tyranitar pulling through, if you guys have not watched uh, Megatron over there. Anywho, and then his very second pick was the Keldeo. This pick is an inter interesting pick just because I think he did not want to go against the Keldeo. Keldeo is a really, really scary mod to try and tar just because of Scald, Sacred Sword, and it outspeeds it. And it has Justified. So I think this was one of the picks that it wasn't meant to complement Tyranitar, but it was meant to. It was meant so that Keldeo could not um, counter Tyranitar. So. I, I, I don't mind that pick. That's a good pick, but hey, we're gonna see in his third OU pick. He picked up the Celebi, and uh, this this is one of the drafts that's. Just, I'm gonna have to admit it's it's. Yeah, yeah, which is nice. Uh, his Celebi. I'm I'm sorry. I was just reading the comments, and uh, I don't. I'm I'm still intrigued about this team I'm intrigued about this team I'm I'm gonna have to admit I'm not fond of this team just in terms of what it, how it makes sense and how it looks but the Celebi Dawn Fan is his very first UU pick uh, Dawn Fan brings Rapid Spin Ice Shard Stab Earthquake and it does a, it actually has a really really decent move pool it has Stone Edge Play Rough uh, Gunk Shot I do believe it has Gunk Shot and Seed Bomb which is which is interesting. It's really, really, really. It's a fun mon. It's a fun mon. It hits hard. I know I I used this Pokemon last season, and it has done incredible things. Unfortunately, Dawnfan has the tendency to always get burnt, which is which is interesting. And uh, then he picked up the Moltres and his second UU pick. Moltres is an interesting pick. I like it. It has a very good typing, the same as Talonflame. If we all remember Talonflame, Smog on Bird over here. Uh, Talonflame, or aka Moltres over here. Moltres has access to probably Hurricane, I believe. Air Slash, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, um, Fire Spin if he wants to trap things in and just let Moltres go at it. Agility, um, yeah, so. The Moltres? Um, the, the Moltres pick is an interesting pick, but having the Dawn Fan, it complements with Dawn Fan just because Rapid Spin is a thing. 
And then uh, his UU3 pick over here is Toxicroak. And I like this pick. I like the Toxicroak because it hits hard. It has a really good typing, a really unique typing. Um, psychic typing is not, it's not really that big of a problem for him just because he has Tyranitar and Celebi. Those guys can take hits for days. But Toxicroak is a bit frail, has access to Sword Punch, Sucker Punch, Drain Punch, Poison Jab, that's right, Fairy Killer right over here. And uh, it has an ability which is Dry Skin, which let it soaks up Scalds, just in case, you know, if you're thirsty, you want to go on for a couple days. Uh, Toxicroak can do that. Toxicroak can soak up the Scalds and not get burnt. And, uh... Yeah, and Toxicroak actually can be run as a special set. I totally forgot about that. The only reason I know that is just because to Toxicroak's pre-evolution uh, can run Vacuum Wave, Nasty Plot, Sludge Bomb, and some other move. And Vacuum Wave is... Yeah, and uh, Toxicroak can actually run the special set just because it can learn Vacuum Wave. It can learn... Uh, sludge bomb and probably can learn some other uh, special attacks so there's that it can catch a lot of people off guard Viking wave actually does a decent amount of damage after one plus two nasty plot so that's really scary and uh yeah <laughs> I, I was a bit I, I'm gonna have to admit I was a bit bitter about this just because I didn't think toxic coke would get picked up at this uh late late in the round. I thought it would have been in a wild card, but this is a really good pickup. I like the Toxicroak. Um, Toxicroak was one of my considerations, and Toxicroak can do a lot. It adds versatility. Depending on how he uses it and how long he can make it withstand, it is like a mini, mini version of Weavile, but maybe it hits a bit harder. Uh, different typing. But anywho, we're gonna move on to the RU first pick, RU number one pick, which is the Grand Bull. Brings him a Fairy type, an Intimidator, pretty defensive on and it has a pretty good offensive presence over here just because it has I think it's got Thunder Wave, Toxic, um, nothing really reliable for recovery. Yeah it has nothing really to recovery. Uh, Play Rough can do a decent amount of damage on a lot of things in terms of versatility. Uh, Granbull is one of those things I'm gonna have to really really see. You guys can remember Shady always using Granbull and him considering it a pretty decent decent RU pick but I uh, like I said this this Granbull pick is gonna be interesting on where it is just because he has Dawnfan and Granbull um, that's, that's somewhat it's it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting I'm just waiting to see how his draft later on works out and uh, we're just gonna move on to the RU2 pick are you his second are you pick there we go I don't know why I've been saying it like that for a while but it is the Drade again and I love this pick I actually really really am fond of this pick he needed a dragon type uh, this thing can be run as a defensive beast rough skin rocky helmet uh, it's got some def some good resistances all around it's got dragon tail it's got fire punches I think it has access to all of the punches and it's another. It's a stealth rocker, so that bringing Tyranitar, Dawnfan. I think Celebi can learn stealth rocks, and Dridigan. They can all set up a stealth rock wall. So that's really awesome to see. Um, I'm hoping that he brings this thing in as much as yeah. It also gets glare. I forgot about that. And glare is an incredible move because it can now paralyze. Let's say. The drill. It can it can paralyze that. It can paralyze any ground mons, and ground mons are really really prominent in pretty much anything. So that being the Landorus, uh, it can paralyze that, make it super slow, and uh, Dritigun can actually do a decent amount of damage too. Life Orbit, I think it gets sheer force too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it gets sheer force. I'm I'm digging deep in my. I, I think I'm, I'm digging deep in my memory over here, but Dritigan does get Sheer Force as, long, along, as well as uh, Rough Skin, so it does a lot of things, and it does a lot of things well. Life Orbit, it can do some incredible damage, put it on a Trick Room. Oh, that thing's going to be hurting people. That thing's going to be breaking walls. So I like this pick, 
And yes, memory. That's pretty good, awesome. And mole break.